Hello everyone, I'm Chris Hernandez and this is the Weekly Report, a look at news from the City of Kansas City, Missouri. The City of Kansas City, Missouri Health Department has been named as a finalist for the third annual Robert Wood Johnson Foundation Culture of Health Prize. Kansas City joins 14 other communities still under consideration for this national recognition. It honors communities for their commitment to build a culture of health for all residents. This recognition acknowledges strategically focused efforts of the health department and several other community organizations. Up to 10 communities may be selected for the final award, which will be announced this fall. A video about Kansas City's culture of health can be viewed on demand at Kansas City's YouTube channel at youtube.com slash KCMOCCO. The city's budget office held its annual Twitter budget chat this past week. Mayor Sly James, city manager Troy Schulte, city department directors, and budget staff gathered together at City Hall to respond to the public's questions and comments live via Twitter. If you missed out on that fun event, there is still time to submit your comments regarding the budget at KCMomentum.org, the city's online community engagement website. The complete budget and a line item breakdown are available in the city's open data catalog. Search for open data at kcmo.gov. Residents may also provide feedback on the proposed budget in person by attending the Finance Committee meeting on Wednesday, March 4th on the 10th floor of City Hall at 8.30 a.m. Now let's check in with some of our city's departments. Dr. Kirk Sudmeyer, I'm Director of Animal Health at the Kansas City Zoo. Another great, great news, probably even bigger than the pregnancy in the chimpanzee, is that Makari, our female gorilla, is also pregnant. And we've been able to confirm that uh, with urine pregnancy tests and with ultrasound. The reason this is such big news uh, for the gorilla is, one, we haven't had a family group of gorillas uh, up until about four or five years ago. And prior to that, it had been more than 20 years before we had had a family group of gorillas. And the other, so we haven't had a baby gorilla born here since 1969. We're ready. Any animal that we know is pregnant, uh, the staff will put together a birthing protocol. What's to be done in this case scenario? How we're supposed to prepare for it? Do we need extra bedding? Does she need extra food? Uh, are we going to plan to keep them off exhibit for a little while? Do we need more staffing to monitor? So it's a very complex, well-written document. And so that is the case for both Rachel Chimpanzee and Kari for the, the gorilla fetus that we're expecting to be born. Gorillas and chimpanzees and a lot of other animals don't put on a huge amount of weight uh, like some people do because they still have to maneuver through the trees. They still have to escape predators. They still have to forage for food. and uh, anything that would slow them down makes them at risk for predators. But the other is that their babies aren't as big as human babies. Uh, we'll get a baby chimpanzee at two to three pounds and a baby gorilla maybe four pounds, maybe just a little bit heavier than that at the time that it's born. So Makari has been a little tricky to condition. This is her uh, first time being ultrasounded, so she's a little leery sometimes. So it takes a little bit of time to condition her. But we were able to see the amnion, which is a fluid that bathes the fetus while it's growing. Uh, we can see mom's reproductive tract, uh, the uterine wall. Uh, we've been able to see the head, uh, the orbital ridge, the eyebrow, so to speak, in the fetus. Uh, the eye, the nose, the mouth, uh, the limbs, the hand, the feet. And just this past week, we were able to image the heart and get the heart rate uh, on the fetus. Hi everyone, I'm Channel 2's Chris Hernandez. We are here at the first ever Kansas City Digital Lab. This is like a summit for all of the city's communicators and we are focusing on ways to engage our residents, the public, in digital communications. Part of this event is about networking and getting to know each other because this is one of the first times we've ever brought together everyone who touches communications across the city. So we have people from who are PIOs in various departments, people who contribute to the website, people from our partner agencies are here. So I want to take 15 seconds right now. And if you are sitting within handshake distance of anyone whom you do not know, say hello right now. You've got 15 seconds. Go. 
and I remember growing up that there was a, seriously a time when, when people would literally say, Kansas City is a great place to live, don't tell anybody. And they were serious about it. And I'm not joking, I used to hear that all the time because they were afraid that others coming in would destroy the, the feel. Uh, just the opposite is the case. Bringing others in makes the feel that much richer. And the only way to do that is for us to tell our story and to tell it constantly, repeatedly, and consistently. And that's what our communications people do. Today we'll be launching our KC Digital Roadmap. I'm pretty excited to share this with you. This is a culmination of a lot of work with a, from a lot of people. The process of building KC's first ever digital roadmap was highly collaborative. The innovation team represents multiple departments across city government, and many of the individuals who participated are here today, so thank you. If you were on one of the innovation team, please raise your hand so we can just acknowledge you. Thank you so much. Bloomberg Associates, as Ashley said, is an international consultancy firm for cities that Mike Bloomberg started just about a year ago. And the mission there is to work with mayors and their staffs in global cities and improve the quality of life for citizens in those cities in a variety of ways. Um, our focus is media and technology, um, something that we did in local government for 12 years in New York City with Mayor Bloomberg. And the approach has been how do you use me media and technology for economic development strategies, attracting and retaining jobs in those sectors, and how can you use media and technology as part of public communication? That's the theme of today's session. While the focus here is on digital communications, we also realize that the traditional methods of engagement, such as phone calls, mail, and email, are still vitally important to our public, and we will continue to focus on that as well. For Channel 2, I'm Chris Hernandez. Hi, my name's Wayne Snyder. I'm the president of the Greg Kleist Community Center's Advisory Committee. And we're very excited to put on the first annual Sam Lacey Memorial Youth Basketball Tournament. This tournament's gonna to be held March 14th and 15th. It's gonna be over a couple of weekends. The other weekend's gonna be March 21st and March 22nd. It's gonna be played right here at the Greg Kleist Community Center. We love for everybody to come down and be a part of our, uh, our tournament. Uh, we have a couple divisions. We have a, a fifth and sixth grade uh, youth division, boys and girls. And we have a, a seventh and eighth grade division, boys and girls as well. For those of you that don't know who Sam Lacey uh, was, uh, Sam Lacey was uh, a citizen first and foremost of, Ka of Kansas City. He played in the National Basketball Association for over 12 seasons. And he lived right here in Missouri uh, for about 20 years. He played with the Kansas City Kings. For those of us that are uh, old enough to remember watching him play, um, he, Sam was very active in our community. Uh, during his basketball days, he financially sponsored uh, numerous youth basketball leagues that played at the Parks and Recs facilities, particularly right here at the Gregg Center. So if you'd like to register for this tournament, Give Katie Sowers a call at the Kansas City Parks and Recs uh, Department, and her phone number is 816-513-7567. Again, that's 816-513-7567. Or you can go to the website, and that's kcparks.org. Looking forward to having you out, and come out and have a good time. You're kind-hearted. You want to do the right thing. When it comes to helping those less fortunate, there are times you doing an act of kindness may simply perpetuate a problem and make it worse. Watch this.
it really is more effective to give resources to agencies that are organized, coordinated, and work directly with folks than to hand it to them because one just doesn't know what one's supporting or where that money is actually going to end up. For all of us who receive support for helping the homeless in our community, uh, we're scrutinized uh, by any number of organizations, both private and public. And that's, I think, is what your impact is so much greater uh, going through that format. And there's so many, such a diversity of organizations out that you can pick that one that's working in the way in which you know you feel the most comfortable. Uh, and I think what folks don't understand is you really can be enabling people to stay in situations that are very dangerous to them, extremely dangerous to them, particularly to women, particularly to older individuals, and quite frankly, particularly to young people. And when I see a young person out in the street, and any of us who are encouraging that, we really are encouraging situations that we have no idea about and that which have the, the most serious of ramifications. And a quarter, a dollar, five dollars, is not the solution. There are agencies that are out feeding the hungry every night of the week, and they're out in vans, so they go where folks are out in camps. What I see in uh, many emergency programs is, quite frankly, people are getting up to four or five meals. That they're that that right now, as opposed to being said, you know, why don't you get some help for your mental health issue? Why don't you get some help for substance abuse? Why don't you find housing? That the, the, the entire day is caught up in moving from one free the service to another, be that just a bunk, be that uh, a food, but none of which is that sustaining uh, service that will lead someone to self-resiliency. And frankly, no one knows if an individual on the street holding a sign is what he or she represents themselves as being. We do know, quite frankly, that there is some trafficking involved, that there are individuals who take folks out, uh, drop them off at a spot, pick them up, and then get money from them, part of, kind of, part of the take. Uh, and whether those folks still are generally homeless and they're just sharing that money because they're getting the transportation to wealthier areas to get money, I don't know. But I also know that I see folks who are three, 300 yards from Restart, from City U Mission, from Hope Faith Ministries, who have their signs who are asking for things. And um, really, that is somebody who may or may not be homeless. I've seen them teaching young people to do that. Uh, and it is counterproductive and frankly it's dangerous for both parties. If you encourage people to come to you and take something from the car, you are then uh, giving kind of a, a, a commitment that anybody who hands you something from a car is going to be helpful as opposed to trying to hurt you. And fr frankly, for women, for members of the LGBT community, uh, for younger people, we're putting them at risk. There is one way to solve homelessness, and it's being uh, verified throughout the nation, and that is to get people into housing as quickly as possible. Um, so it is not to hand things out to them, it is not even to feed them, it's to get housing. And uh, many efforts that are happening with the best of intentions are actually getting in the way of getting people into housing. If you want to truly help, Give your time or donation to one of the many local organizations whose only goal is to help the homeless men, women, and children in Kansas City. I'm Officer Shelley Gaddis. Have a safe week. For more information about these stories, please log on to kcmo.gov and search for the weekly report. To view this program again or other Channel 2 video productions, visit our YouTube channel at youtube.com slash kcmocco. That does it for this edition of the Weekly Report. I'm Chris Hernandez. Have a great week.